Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Uh, as you can see, I got a bunch of materials laid out here today and I'm getting ready to do a series on uh, materials and structural concepts for ultralight aircraft. Uh, but before I dive into making those videos, I thought I'd uh, create a new front end uh, for the final part of the series on preventing spins. Uh, that would be part seven. Uh, perhaps you've been awaiting the final results and you're about to see them. I'm going to present uh, the math that goes behind analyzing uh, the plan form shape of the Elevon and the, configura the configuration of the aircraft to determine whether or not that particular flying wing design is susceptible to spins or not. Uh, and then I will present a spreadsheet tool that I use for doing that analysis on any given uh, flying wing design. And I'll be making that uh, spreadsheet available to any viewer out there that would like to have a copy. You uh, simply uh, go to PayPal and uh, send 10 bucks uh, to my email address. And by return email, you get a copy of the spreadsheet. And uh, the cells that you need for inputting your design information will be open. And the spreadsheet will give you your answers in a matter of minutes. A uh, very easy tool to use. So uh, inexpensive, uh, something nice to keep around. And if you have any interest at all in doing flying wing design, you should have a copy of this tool. Uh, it's super easy to get. So you've seen my email address up here, and I'll show it again at the end. And uh, if you have a mind to, please uh, uh, get your own copy. And I assure you that every penny uh, from the money that comes in from selling those spreadsheets uh, goes right into uh, the glider that I'm building <laughs> behind me. You can see the spars behind me, some nose ribs, and uh, all of that money will go directly into that project. So you'll be doing two good things. You, you get yourself a very handy and useful tool, uh, kind of critical to flying wing design in my mind, and you help me uh, build my glider, get it done. So that'd be great. Uh, but before we dive into that uh, final segment of the video, I'd like to take a moment uh, to speak directly to a couple of design groups that I know are out there that are working on uh, Horton-type uh, flying wings. And these would be flying wings that use the bell-shaped lift distribution. Um, through all of my work over the years, and I've been at this for 35 years approximately, uh, I have come to understand that any flying wing con configuration that uses the bell-shaped lift distribution is uh, highly particular about the Elevon plan form shape relative to generating spins. Now this is a new concept that people haven't really analyzed before. People have been playing around with Elevon shapes. There's uh, some people that are working in the direction that I am, but I don't think anybody's actually quantified it. Uh, and provided a, a way to analyze whether it's a good design or not, which is what I'm presenting here today. And uh, the Horton designs are particularly susceptible to having problems, even though they all look somewhat similar. You can have one that looks practically identical to the next one. One has no problem, and the other one does have problems in terms of having spins. I know I've created those designs myself in models. One spins, one doesn't. And that's why I did all this work, to figure out why one behaves one way and one behaves the other way. And I know that at the end of uh, the remaining Horton brother, I think it was Ramar uh, in Argentina, he was working in this area. He had uh, um, barn door elevons on one of his flying wings, one of the foot launch ones, and uh, rather than the long strip elevons. And he moved winglets inboard uh, for his uh, cargo flying wing. And the cargo flying wing had large fences on the wing. And some of the control surfaces were outboard of the winglet and some were inboard of the winglet. So uh, from looking at his work and trying to understand what he was doing, I think that he was working in this area of trying to figure out uh, what are the uh, ways of controlling the flow on the wing uh, such that you can prevent uh, stalls and spins, or at least the stall-spin combination. You never prevent the stalls. Um, and I worked in that area, and I believe that uh, my answer is probably the most straightforward, easy-to-analyze answer on creating a flying wing that doesn't spin. Uh, so uh, for the groups that are creating these full-size aircraft that are Horton-like, uh, I am reaching out to you and saying, please take a moment 
uh, to think about all of the material that I've presented and uh, consider that it won't take you much time uh, to grab one of these spreadsheet tools and check your own design against it. Um, can I guarantee that my tool is 100% correct? It'll give you numbers that will guarantee your aircraft won't spin? No, I can't make that promise. But I can say that I've tested the tool uh, in both uh, reality and numerical analysis, and it appears to be correct. And I think we all know that flying wing design is not a well-studied area. We're all pioneers, even at this uh, late stage in aircraft development, aircraft design. All kinds of tools out there, but none of them address this particular issue. So this is a new thing. And uh, I know I've had uh, a flying wing crash uh, because of stall spin. My first one did. And, and it's a frightening scene to see your test pilot go down with the aircraft and you think you've killed somebody. Uh, and, and it's frightening. And nobody wants to have that happen, ever. Uh, so I'm reaching out to you and saying, look, all you have to do is hit me up on the email address that I provided at the beginning and then I'll provide at the end here uh, and just say, hey, Raul, please send me a copy of this spreadsheet. I promise I'll check my design against it and I'll let you know what the numbers are and uh, let you know whether the design is safe or not. Uh, because I don't have your numbers and sometimes people are reluctant to give out all the numbers on their aircraft. I'd be glad to do the analysis for you if you would send me the washout schedule and the taper ratio and the elevon shape and all that. But it's probably easier if you just hit up my email, get a copy of the spreadsheet, spend 30 minutes, check your design. Um, if you're already so far along and you find out that your numbers aren't so good, uh, there are ways to work around it. You can still change your elevon shape without changing your major molds. Um, you can be very careful on how you fly the aircraft, or whether you get it slowed up in a turn and lots of up elevon and other problems. But it, it is, I just don't think it's wise to go ahead and fly at this point without having checked these numbers. It doesn't hurt to check. Uh, and just because something isn't invented by somebody else doesn't mean we shouldn't grab that and at least try that tool and, and see what it does for us in terms of our own aircraft design. Uh, better safe than sorry, I like to say. And above all, I'm sure that we all want to create safe aircraft designs. Uh, so no questions asked. Send me your name, your email address. Hit me up at this email address and I'll send you a no strings attached copy of the spreadsheet and, and you just let me know what your numbers are and, and whether they're good or not. And to all my viewers out there, I'm not uh, denigrating anybody's particular design. Flying wing design is an extremely tricky area. Uh, some of the best designers in the world have turned out some pretty hazardous flying wing designs and safe ones. It's an area that is not well studied. Uh, so for some person to sit down and say, that's a good flying wing and that's a bad one, is iffy at best because we really don't know that much about them, certainly compared to conventional aircraft configurations. So uh, the message that I'm sending out is not to say that anybody's design is bad. I'm just asking them to please go the extra step and do uh, something that's new and a little bit different to help ensure they're generating the safest possible design that they can. So that said, uh, let's go on into segment seven. I hope you find it interesting. We're going to see a little bit more math, and then you're going to see me use the spreadsheet tool. And once again, uh, you'll have a chance to get your own copy. Uh, send me 10 bucks at this, uh, wherever I put it here, email address at paypal.com. And by return email, you'll get your own copy of the spreadsheet. And I thank you very much. And just as a reminder, every penny goes into the glider that I'm building behind me. So thanks for watching. Stick with me as I develop my aircraft. Watch all the videos. Go back and look at some of the old videos so you don't ask the questions that have already been answered. And I have to say, hey, go look at the other videos. And uh, I hope you, uh, at the very least, are amused and entertained. And uh, at the other level, hopefully you've learned something along the way and you can apply it to your own design. So thanks for watching and here we go. Welcome back. Uh, so we've seen at this point that it's critical in terms of the Elevon plan form shape to have it correct so that we don't accidentally decrease the washout of the wing so much 
that we encounter uh, tip stall problems. Uh, we've seen that the, uh, a tapered elevon, uh, where it's wider at the root than at the tip, uh, actually causes the middle part of the wing to wash out more than the tip and contribute to the problem. So we know, bad plan. Um, better plan, either straight or a reverse taper, where it's narrow at the root and wide at the tip. And when it gets deflected, we see that we have more washout at the tip than at the root. This is a stabilizing configuration. So then the question becomes, how much? Uh, I told you that there's three parameters involved. There's the taper of the wing, there's the initial washout in the wing, and uh, there is the shape of the elevon itself. Uh, there's a fourth factor, which is the airfoil selection, but I'm going to get to that later. And uh, so it becomes a question of what is, how do I calculate the right shape? Well, in order to calculate the right shape, first of all, we have to know uh, what this effective cord line is doing. We have to be able to calculate that as the elevon goes up and down, how are the relative cord line angles changing? And that involves a little bit of geometry and a little bit of trig. And I hope you got yourselves ready because I'm going to go get a whiteboard here and we're going to look at the math behind that. So hang on a second. Okay, so try not to panic. Uh, the equations look a little complicated at first, but really it's just very straightforward trigonometry. And let me walk you through it here. Actually, you might want to take a moment here, pause the video, do a screenshot, take a picture of this, and... Uh, Put it in your file so that you can study this at your leisure later. Okay, so uh, we want to find this angle here. And what this is, is this is the original cord line of the airfoil along here. And this is an elevon deflected upwards, or actually any flap surface. So the normal cord line of the airfoil would be C here. That runs all the way from the leading edge to the trailing edge. And as the elevon deflects upward, we get this new cord line that runs from the leading edge to the trailing edge that's deflected up. And we have the uh, deflection of the elevon as delta sub e here, and the cord length from the hinge point to the trailing edge is c sub e, uh, e being for elevon. Here the alpha d, this is the change in angle of attack. This is the delta uh, of the angle of attack. And then C sub H here, that is the cord line to the hinge point. And finally, C2 here is from the leading edge uh, straight back to uh, the new trailing edge location when it's dropped down as a perpendicular. Okay, here are our basic parameters. Alpha D, as I mentioned, is the angle of attack delta, the change in the angle of attack. C is the airfoil cord, C sub H is the cord line to the hinge, C sub E is the elevon cord. These three values are always known for a given design. You'll come in and say, I have uh, the uh, airfoil cord at the elevon root end is this length, uh, the length to the hinge line is this, and the cord length of the elevon uh, is a result of those two values. Uh, so you need to know these three numbers for both the root end of the elevon and the tip end of the elevon. Now, uh, very basic geometry here. Uh, C1, which is the horizontal distance uh, from the hinge point to where the new trailing edge location is. Uh, C sub 1 is C sub E times cosine of delta E. A very simple trigonometry equation. TEH, that is the trailing edge height. That is the height from where the cord line had been before, up to where it is with the elevon deflected. So TE, trailing edge height, is CE times sine of delta E. Okay, and now we know that C2 is equal to C sub H plus C sub 1. So it's this length plus this length is C2 down here. Okay. Now, once we're at that point, by simple trigonometry, we know that the tangent of alpha delta, alpha d, alpha sub d, is TEH over C2. So now, by simple substitution, uh, we know what TEH is, and we know what C2 is, so we substitute those equations in here, and now tangent alpha, 
tangent alpha d is equal to c sub e times sine uh, delta sub e. And uh, on the bottom, we got uh, c sub h plus uh, c sub e times cosine delta e. And that's pretty much it. So uh, alpha sub d is the arc tangent or the inverse tangent of that same value. This is the equation that we're concerned with. We have the values for this equation for any given Elevon deflection. Uh, and then we can calculate alpha d for any Elevon deflection. So as the Elevon moves up and down, we can find this new value for this relative chord line. And this is the chord line that is essentially the uh, revised uh, aerodynamic chord line. It becomes an effective washout chord line. Uh, and then I should note here that we have um, that alpha sub e, that's the effective angle of attack, is theta sub w plus alpha d. Now, theta sub w is the local physical washout. In other words, at the root end of the elevon, you'll know what the washout is in the wing, I hope, and you need to add that washout to the relative change in the angle. So this may not have been horizontal. The wing may have already been washed out a little bit like this. And then we have the alpha sub d, which adds even more to it. And that's this equation here. And that gives us alpha sub e. This is the value that we want to know, the total value. And we want to know this value for a series of elevon deflections for both the root end of the elevon and the tip end of the elevon. So uh, now uh, we want to calculate alpha sub e at the elevon root and tip for a range of delta e's. And in this next segment of the video, that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to uh, boot up here on my computer my spreadsheet that I use to do this, and I'll walk you through that spreadsheet, and then we'll talk about um, the values that you need in order to ensure that your design is spin-proof and how to actually design that into the wing. So we're going to do a little flip around here, and I'm going to take you to my computer. Hello, and welcome back. Uh, you're now looking at the spreadsheet I use to uh, make the calculations to determine the appropriate shape of the elevon to prevent spins on a flying wing of my type, which is just basically a swept, tapered flying wing. Uh, this is probably applicable to uh, uh, any swept flying wing, regardless of its taper. So what we have here at the top is uh, the part of the spreadsheet that is used to make the calculations for a new design. Uh, you're going to put in various parameters here that define uh, your flying wing, and it's going to give you numbers over here that you use to determine whether it is uh, spin-proof or not. Now, uh, this is not uh, a empirical method, uh, an absolute method that says, oh, you do this calculation, you get this number, and, and you have a winner. It's done by comparison, and it is uh, compared to a model that I know to be spin-proof. Uh, the uh, red wing that I discussed in the early, earlier videos, known to be spin-proof, and I put in the numbers here for that particular model, and I calculated uh, the washout spread uh, for that particular model. Now, how this basically works is I'm using the calculations that I showed you earlier on the whiteboard applied to the uh, root end of the elevon and the tip end of the elevon, and then calculating the washout angle spread between the two, and that's done over a range of elevon deflections. Now, I only go up to about 35 degrees elevon deflection because generally controls are not deflected further than that due to large amounts of separated flow that you get. They're really only effective up to about 35 degrees, so that's sufficient for our calculations here. What you see in the spreadsheet here uh, for both sections of the spreadsheet uh, are the basic parameters that you need to know to make these calculations, and that's in this column here, right down here. Uh, 
So, and we need to know the numbers in uh, the angles in radians. So what we have here is this first uh, cell is in degrees, which is indicated uh, by the dimensions here. And the second uh, value is in radians, which is what the spreadsheet needs to make the calculations. So degrees and radians, and then the other values. So we need to know the washout in the wing. And that's not just the washout on the elevon or what angle it's at. That is the washout in the entire wing. And we need to know the washout in the wing at the elevon root end and at the tip of the elevon. Now, if you, uh, you will generate these numbers separately as you're working on your flying wing design. You'll say, oh, I'm going to have uh, 10 degrees of twist and it's going to be linear along the entire semi-span. And then I'm going to have this amount of taper. And you literally have to go in and do the calculations to figure out what the twist is in your wing at any given point along the wing. Uh, this spreadsheet does not do that job for you. You have to do that separately on your own so you can calculate the numbers uh, that you need on the shape of the elevon to, to make your model spin proof. So it's assumed that you know the basic values that are in your design to start with. You might want to set up your own spreadsheet uh, that does calculations of the actual twist in the wing at any given location on the wing based on the overall twist in the wing and how you're doing that twist. Maybe the twist is linear, maybe it's nonlinear. I don't know that. I'd have to set up numerous spreadsheets to do that job for all of the different types of twist patterns that you could have. So that is best left, as they say, as an exercise for the student. Uh, you'll have to generate that yourself. So for the spin proof model, I had a linear washout in there, which gave me uh, 1.43 degrees of washout at the root end of the elevon and gave me five degrees of washout at the tip end of the elevon. And the wing cord at the root end of the elevon was seven inches and the cord of the wing at the tip of the elevon is four and three quarter inches. And the elevon itself was a straight elevon, uh, no taper to it, is 1.875 inches wide at the root, 1.875 inches wide at the tip. So uh, the spreadsheet ca then calculates what these angles are in radians, and it goes and makes these calculations over here uh, for various elevon deflections. So as we go down this list of elevon deflections from 0 to 35 degrees, it calculates the elevon deflection in radians first. And then what it does is it calculates the effective washout. And remember, this is what I talked about with the effective cord line. As the elevon is deflected, the effective cord line changes, as I showed earlier in the video. And this is making that calculation of what that angle is in this column right here. And it's also doing the same calculation at the tip end of the elevon. So we see, of course, at zero degrees elevon deflection, we have the numbers that we started out with, 1.43 degrees and 5 degrees. And those are shown right here. And the spread between those two is approximately 3.57 degrees. And it is this spread that we're concerned about. If this spread between the wa effective washout at the root and the effective washout at the tip of the elevon, if this spread is too small, the model will spin. And the first thing that you'll note is as elevon deflection increases, the spread between the numbers also increases. And we know that this model is spin proof, so we know that our numbers have to be somewhere in this range in order to be spin proof. Thank goodness I have a model that's spin proof, <laughs> that we could get these numbers and know what new designs should be. Now, how do I know that these numbers aren't too generous? That, oh, this model was spin-proof by a wide margin, and these numbers could actually be smaller. Well, I've actually gone and done testing on that and discovered that this particular model was barely spin-proof, just right on the hairy edge. If, these, if this elevon had been a little bit tapered here at the tip, this model would not have been spin-proof. So it was just luck that I ended up with a design that's spin proof with these basic parameters that are over here. And that is very fortunate because we can all use those numbers then going forward. So here we have the spread over the range of elevon deflections that we know generate a spin proof model. And because I know this model is on the hairy edge of being spin proof, I've decided to add a 10% safety margin. So these are the numbers that we want to work to. 
we want to have at least uh, we have right around four degrees of uh, washout effective washout spread when there's uh, elevon is not deflected and at maximum deflection of 35 degrees we want upwards of around nine degrees of effective washout spread this type of spread between the root end and the tip end of the elevon will yield a flying wing design that is spin proof known for a fact uh, via experimentation so up here at the top this is the part of the spreadsheet that you will work with um, everybody that's a patron will be getting a copy of the spreadsheet uh, yours to use and fair warning I'm going to try to lock these numbers down here so that you can't change them if I'm unable to lock them be careful don't change any of these numbers down here or you will ruin the spreadsheet and you'll have to send me an email and say Raul please send me another copy of the spreadsheet uh, so you're only going to work in the top portion up here and that would be in this area and the only area where you really need to change any numbers is these six numbers right down here what is your washout at the root end of the elevon of the whole wing what's the washout of the whole wing at the tip end of the elevon what is your wing cord at the root end of the elevon and what is your wing cord at the tip end of the elevon and then what's the size of your the cord of your elevon what is the width of your elevon now these all happen to be set up in inches here but you could just as easily turn this into feet or centimeters or millimeters or whatever you want to use the, the code that's written into these cells will work the same so uh, and just by the way we'll uh, oh you won't get to see it here I don't have an in frame uh, but when you get the spreadsheet you'll be able to click on one of these cells and it'll show you the equation uh, that's in there uh, I highly recommend that you don't change any of the equations that are in here or you will also run the spreadsheet that way so don't mess with the cells the content of the cells the only thing that you're working with is right over here in this column so here we have the numbers for the quarter scale model as it was first built and it had zero degrees of washout at the root end of the elevon we had three degrees at the tip end of the elevon these are the wing cords in inches nine and a half and six inches and the cord of the elevon at the root and the tip of the elevon and you see the elevon is tapered about a half an inch over its length uh, so it is wider at the root than it is at the tip and it looked like a wonderful design but look at the numbers here we are on the spread over here we start out with three degrees of spread well that's pretty close we wanted four with our safety margin three and a half should make it spin proof so we're close but for, with safety margin we'd like it closer to four we don't quite have that here and then look at what happens to the numbers as the elevon is deflected we max out at about five degrees of washout spread with this configuration well five degrees is nowhere near nine you're four degrees short and indeed this model would spin uh, the very first version of the quarter scale model uh, would spin uh, when put into a situation that would uh, cause that to occur uh, you could fly it in such a way as it wouldn't spin but if you're doing uh, slow flight in a turn it could easily break into a spin so the first thing I did is I went back and I changed the elevon to be straight so I changed this to two point two five inches at the tip in other words I just simply widened up the elevon at the tip changed nothing else and let's punch those numbers in and see what we get and look at the huge change that makes so I widened up the elevon by a half an inch at the tip of the elevon and now look at our spreads we still have three degrees down here which is not quite sufficient but now at the maximum deflection we have 7.9 degrees of spread between uh, the effective washout at the root end of the elevon and the effective washout at the tip end of the elevon big change in numbers essentially doubled that spread well now we're getting pretty close uh, at a minimum here I know on the spin proof model at 8.1 so we're within, within two tenths of a degree of uh, not being spin proof very very close and when I flew this model with a straight elevon like this it was pretty nice you could do just about anything but if you provoked it if you really held the nose up high and flew it as slow as you could go in a turn and then did some other silly stuff like uh, yank in some more aileron or anything that would cause that elevon to move up further uh, you could force it into a spin 
uh, especially if you had the CG a little bit aft. So this was very close to being spin proof, but not quite. So then on the quarter scale model, I then went and reduced uh, the cord at the tip end of the elevon down to two inches. And look what that does for our numbers here. I took this down to two inches, left this at two and a quarter, and now we have numbers that are very, very close. At the low end, uh, we have we don't have the four degrees of spread that we'd like to have, but it's not that critical because when we're flying slow on a turn, we're not looking at zero degrees elevon deflection. We actually have a fair amount of up elevon deflection. We're going to be in the uh, the elevon will be flex. Uh, deflected up 15 or 20 degrees. So we're up here around uh, 6.3 degrees of spread between the root and the tip. And what we want up around 20 degrees, about 6.7. So very, very close uh, to spin proof. And over here on the spin proof model, 6.12. I had 6.3. And indeed, with this Elevon setup, the model was spin proof. So two inches at the root, two and a quarter inches at the tip, and the model was marginally spin proof. And it flew very, very nice. But to be on the safe side, uh, we'd like to add a 10% margin to that. So it would really behoove me if I wanted to go back and make the model perfect, I'd come back and I might increase this guy up to, oh, two and three eighths, 2.375 inches at the tip. And there we go. And now we have 6.724 here, we got 6.73, and up here at max deflection we have 9.6, and we want 8.9. So there we go. That small change adding an eighth of an inch to the core of the Elevon out at the tip of the Elevon will now make this model sturdily spin-proof. Uh, you'll be able to fly this with full-up elevator and go through turns very slowly, and it won't break into a spin. So, you can now use this spreadsheet to put in your basic parameters here and determine whether the model that you've designed is spin proof or not. And then you can go in and fiddle with the numbers for the core to the Elevon to give you the Elevon shape that will make you spin proof. Now, does that mean that your Elevon is always going to have a reverse taper like this one where it's narrower at the root and wider at the tip? No, that is strictly dependent upon the other factors. What is your cord of the wing at the root of the Elevon? What is the cord of the wing at the tip of the Elevon? And what's your washout in the wing? And all of those parameters will drive your answer down here at your Elevon cord. And you might have a flying wing design that actually ends up with a tapered Elevon, a regular tapered wider at the root, narrower at the tip, and it could very well be spin proof that way. Mostly, I think the lower limit is a constant cord elevon. I think for almost any stable flying wing configuration, uh, based on what most people would have as taper and washout in it, you're going to end up with an elevon that is, uh, at a minimum, constant cord. Now, what happens is, as you flatten the washout in the wing overall, it drives the elevon to a higher and higher level of reverse taper. And we generally would want to reduce the washout in the entire wing as we try to achieve higher performance via going closer to the elliptical lift distribution. So the closer you are to an elliptical lift distribution, the wider the cord of the Elevon needs to be at the tip in order to prevent uh, spins. And let me show you here what I've done with the um, full-size configuration. The full-size configuration uh, actually has about uh, one degree of washout at the root end of the Elevon, and it has three degrees of washout at the uh, tip of the Elevon. And I put that added washout in the full-size uh, configuration to create a slower trim speed. Uh, the current trim speed of the model is fairly high and it's higher than what you would want for a hang glider. So to reduce the uh, just uh, neutral control position trim velocity of the aircraft, I added one degree of washout uh, inboard on the wing. Costs a little bit on the high end performance, but it'll make the aircraft easier to foot launch and land. Uh, and then these figures here are representative of the full-size configuration. Uh, these are quarter-scale figures here. Uh, so uh, changing the one degree here is appropriate. And now uh, with that one degree in there, we now see that we've dropped down to uh, 
eight and a half on the spread here, and we'd like to have 8.9. Uh, with a safety factor on it. So that tells me that because of that degree that I've added in the full size configuration, I need a little bit more reverse taper uh, in my Elevon. I probably need to push this up to about 2.5 uh, here. Uh, and again, that pulls me back up and that'll give me plenty of margin. So between the model and the full size configuration, the full size configuration will have a uh, slightly greater reverse taper. Of course, I could lower this down to two and a quarter here and uh, then we don't have enough margin, but I could narrow up the root end of the Elevon. I could lower this down to say uh, 1.75, and let's see what we get. Now we're at 8.755, not quite enough. I could drop this down to 1.5 down here. And now, once again, we have enough margin here for safety. Now we're way up here, about 9.6. Uh, down here at 20 degrees, we're at 6.35, and we wanted 6.73. So we're very close here. So one and a half out to two and a quarter, maybe we want up to 2.375. And then at 20 degrees, now we got plenty of margin. We're fine. So. Uh, because I added this additional washout here, I moved the wash in, washout closer into the root uh, to make the full-size configuration fly slower at a uh, stick neutral trim condition. I have to have a greater reverse taper on my Elevon. Uh, and you'll be able to play with the numbers for your particular configuration and find out how these work out. Of course, these are in inches, and I'm talking about the full-size configuration, but we recall that this is a quarter scale model. So whether I'm working in inches or feet is neither here nor there. All of the proportions are still correct, and therefore these numbers still come out correct here. So it's an interesting phenomena in geometry, how this all works out. I hope you have a chance to use this spreadsheet. If for some reason you do muck it up, uh, just uh, uh, send me an email and ask for another copy. I'll send you another copy. Uh, and remember, uh, you did pay to receive this spreadsheet by being a patron. And uh, if you want to share this spreadsheet with somebody else, uh, please recommend to them that they become a patron and help support the project and uh, make their own contributions so that uh, this tool that they get, which is highly valuable, uh, that they've helped uh, pay uh, for all the work that went into uh, create this tool and, and create the configuration and make this little discovery along the way. You will also find in your spreadsheet down here at the bottom, I have the specific numbers for the spin proof model uh, for the stations as we go along the wing, two, four, six, eight, every uh, two inches as we go out along the wing. The yellow area here is where the Elevon starts. And then we got another yellow area out here where the Elevon ends. And uh, this uh, part of the spreadsheet just gives you the actual numbers that went into the design of the spin proof model in case you want to reference those. Once again, I'll try to lock these numbers out so that you can't accidentally change them and, and muck up the tool. Uh, these numbers don't feed into the tool, so uh, I think if you did change your number down here, I don't think you're going to mess up the tool up here. But uh, your best bet is stick to this one column right here, only change numbers that are in that one column. and compare the numbers that you get here to the numbers that are down here to make sure that you have a sufficient margin in your design to make it spin proof. I hope you find this tool to be useful. Uh, I am thrilled to be able to share this tool with you uh, so that you can work your own designs and make them spin proof and have flying wings that are much uh, more fun to fly, certainly safer to fly. And uh, I hope you have a chance to try this out. And thanks for watching through all these videos. Uh, I think this is an interesting phenomena. And I hope that over the decades, people will begin to uh, learn about this phenomena and study it and use it in their designs uh, so that we can all have uh, flying wings that fly better and, and fly safer. So thanks for watching. Fly safe and come back and watch the next segment and follow along as I continue to develop the full-size wing. Bye for now.